Thank you again to Pastor Juno and the equipping team, especially the teaching team, for giving me the opportunity to share the gospel again, to share the God has spoken to me through the verses that I want to share this morning. So my prayer is that these verses that have blessed me can be a blessing to all of you too this morning. Because before we continue, let us pray. <clears throat> God, we thank you because we are given another chance to hear your voice through the words which I will share this morning. Thank you because your word has been a blessing to me first. I pray that the message this morning will also be a blessing to all who hear. Help me, anoint me so that I can convey your words precisely, but also simply, so that it can be understood by all of us. May the Holy Spirit lead my words so that when I deliver or share this part, I convey it with God's anointing. I convey it with wisdom and strength from God and so that all of us here... <clears throat> will be touched and blessed through the truth of this word of God. I believe you are here, but you are also in the home or room of those who are watching and hearing this sermon online. Lord, we are all ready to hear your voice. Amen. I'm always great, feeling grateful and honored every time God gives me the opportunity like this to share his word. Because, yeah, who am I that God entrusted to share his heart, right? Last week, Pastor Ryan Bogart kicked off our new series, Living Water. And today, I will continue with the topic, Everything is Missional. The part of God's Word that underlies my sharing regarding this topic today is from Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46. I will read to you, or you can open your Bible or your apps or your phone or whatever devices that you have right now or you can see on the screen. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. When the king will say to those on, on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was stranger and you invite me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of this brother and sister of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sex, or in prison, and did not help you. He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Okay, there was a woman who had a dream about having a conversation with God. She was angry because of all the suffering and the evil powers he was experiencing in her life. So he was complaining to God. She said, God, why, did, why didn't you do something about all this? And then God said, yes, I have done something. I create you. I was intrigued, with, intrigued by a pastor who composed the sermon title, Watch, W-A-T-C. W-A-T-C stands for we are the sermon. So for me, I believe that in Matthew 25, Jesus want, wants us, his followers, to be the sermon. 
not just to be the listener of sermons. Jesus wants us to be missionaries, to be his servant, to be a witness, not just to be a global artist director like me. He wants us to be the living sermons that have breath and life in the way we speak and walk. Why? Because to Jesus, everything is mission. Everything is about the mission. Everything is missional. There is no dualism in the meaning of mission in the eyes of God. Whether that be local mission or global mission, or be a missionary or be the churches who send the missionaries. Remember, our life as believers cannot be separate from mission. No matter what the denomination are, churches cannot be separate from mission. So I want to explain a little bit about the context and background this section. So this section concludes the series of prophecies and teaching of the Lord Jesus regarding his coming and the final judgment. He lays out some important things here. The first one, just as the gospel must be preached to all nations, Remember, the day of the judgment will cover all nations too. Verse 32. Second, just as the gospel must be responded to by each, so the judgment will apply to each one too. Verse 33. And the last one, third. When Jesus first came, he came in humility as the Savior, but later he will come as king with all his glory on, and all his angels. Verse 31. So at the time, the final decision of each person, eternal destiny, will be taken. Verse 34 and 41. So the question is, on what basis did God make the eternal decision? This part, very surprising. It probably surprised most of us this morning. What we often hear is that we are safe not by works, right, but by faith in God's grace. Only when people welcome Jesus, open their heart for Jesus, will the person be saved. However, this section seems to teach something different. Everyone will be judged on the basis of their good works. Those who have genuine acts of love for others will enter to eternal happiness, verses 35 to 40. On the other hand, those who do not love are cast into eternal torment, verses 41 to 46. So seemingly we should not ignore real action in order to emphasize the principle of sola gratia, that means saved by grace. Because based on this text, what God judges worthy of being with him in heaven later are people who care for those who are less fortunate. Those who are hungry, thirsty, in prison, sick, living in poverty, abandoned by society and the space. People who are hopeless. So what we do for them, we do for Christ. This is the true meaning of mission. This is the true meaning of the real Christian. That means if you say you are Christian, that is already saved by God's grace, you will be produced fruit in your entire life, especially with your good works to others. Jesus reveals several truths in Matthew 25, 31, 46. So, we can understand the real concept of mission and to understand everything that happens in our life. When we are involved in a church or life or live life as believers, all these are considered mission. In other words, Jesus teaches us, his followers, how to be the sermon. Sermon that's alive. Also how to be actual missionaries, whoever we are. No matter what condition we live in and wherever we might live, what are the important lessons that we can learn from these verses? We need to learn directly from Jesus and his ministry. I know there are probably thousands or millions of books about mission that we can find in bookstores, libraries, online, etc. 
writers try to define what mission means using fancy words. All companies, organization, foundation, hospital, including churches. They all have a mission and vision that is written in fancy words. But the question again, are they done or not? I love, as a pastor, I love to read the books, as a global, especially as a global mission director and pastor, it is must to read. But I prefer to learn directly from the Lord Jesus about the true meaning of mission. So, when I study this text, I found at least two meanings of mission that Jesus taught us. So, that why do we consider everything is missional? First lesson from Jesus, mission is serving. We need to understand what is the meaning of serving is. So, first of all, we need to understand that the purpose of service is so God can reach others through our hands. In 2 Corinthians 9, 12 to 13, the Bible says that the service we provide not only meet needs, but expresses thanks to God and leads others to praise God. The Bible also says the service builds up to the body of Christ. Ephesians 4, 12. In 1 Corinthians 12, the Bible explains that there are different kinds of service and then identifies many ways to provide service to others. So again, the Bible emphasizes the importance of providing service to others. When asked how to inherit eternal life, Jesus indicated that the two key points were loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. The parable of the Good Samaritan is a good example of how the person who loves his neighbor is the one who provides service to him. Everyone is your neighbor, and you love your neighbor by providing him service when he is need. And then, again, according to the Bible, Jesus spent most of his ministry providing service to others. He performed numerous miracles, such as healing the blind, which met physical needs but he also provided service in meeting emotional needs. If we remember Pastor Ryan Borgert's sermon last week about the woman uh, at the well, so Jesus' interaction with the woman at the well is a wonderful example of this. Hope you can hear my voice still. So, can I continue? Okay. Or maybe I'm too loud. Okay, there you go. So again, if you remember Pastor Ryan Bogart's sermon last week about the woman at the well, so again, Jesus' interaction with the woman at the well is a wonderful example of this. The Bible instructs us to follow Jesus' example. So some people mistakenly believe that the Bible does not require those who follow God to provide service to others. Their reasoning is that they are saved by grace alone. So they are therefore under no obligation to provide service for others. While it is true that people are saved by grace alone, but the Bible is clear that faith without deeds is dead. You can read on James chapter 2, 26, where the Bible says that God expects his followers to provide service to others. So the Bible contains roughly 30 references to God's concern for the widow and the orphan or fatherless as well, multiple references to his concern for the alien. Widows, orphans, and aliens were the most vulnerable members of society and God expect his people to provide them with service. God will, just, God will pass judgment on those who fail, provide service for the most vulnerable members of society. So again, why do we consider everything is missional? 
The first lesson from Jesus, because mission speaks about serving. Not only about being a missionary or joining the mission trip or mission committee. Being kind to those who are poor and persecuted is something that God pays close attention to. And he wants his believer to always do so. I remember the story, I know you know the story too, when Sodom and Gomorrah was de were destroyed by God, people thought it was caused by homosexual sins. However, prophet Ezekiel said it was more than just that. Ezekiel 16, 49 says, Now, this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the, the poor and needy. The same, King Solomon on Proverbs 21, 13 says, whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out and not to be answered. Funny because I read someone was observing Matthew 25, and he thought these verses were too vague or too hazy. So he tried to rewrote these verses and end up with this. I want to read for you. The person write like this. So you saw that I was hungry, but you built a non-profit organization that deals with humanities and discuss hunger. You saw that I was in prison, so you went to the prison chapel to pray, asking for me to be freed. You saw that I was naked, so you thought of my moral base on my look. You saw that I was sick, so you immediately got down on your knees and thanked God that you were healthy. You saw that I was homeless, so you gave a sermon titled, The Spiritual Home and the Love of God. You saw that I was lonely, but you ignore my loneliness. Went to your church prayer meeting and put me on your prayer list. And finally, you become a person who's getting closer to God. But here I am, still lonely, sick, in prison, and cold. I'm sure that the person who rewrote some of these verses in Matthew 25 realized one thing. If we keep talking about all the good we do for Christ, but never actually act on it, it will result in an empty faith with no power. So, okay, first lesson from Jesus. Why everything is missional? Because mission is surfing. The second lesson, mission is good deed. What Jesus meant in these verses is if we, if we say that we are his children, he will be known for our good deeds. In Matthew 7, 16, 20, Jesus says we are known by the fruit we produce. A good tree will not produce bad fruits. Jesus went on to say that trees that not, do not produce good fruits will be thrown into the fire. So I have a story about one pastor. So there was a pastor who had discussion with an atheist. The atheist challenged, with, with him, challenged the pastor with the question, what good is it to be a Christian? Because during the era of Nazi Germany, the church failed completely. So the pastor thought there was some truth in that question. After several emails going back and forth, there were comments made about Albert Einstein, who was not a Christian. He was born as a Jew, but he saw the era of difficulty in Germany, and based on his observation, he thought the church was right. The church stood firmly without compromising and ignored all the campaigns of Hitler who oppressed the truth. Even though Einstein was never interested in the church, the atheist felt that the church had a huge impact because of his bravery and determination in keeping the intellectual and moral freedom. He was pushed to admit it and end up praising the church that he used to hate. Remember, Ensign was not a Christian, and he was not even a good Jew. But he admitted how important the church was. 
Because what? Because the church stood for righteousness. The church was, was able to stand in name of those who are weak and oppressed. From this fruit, Einstein got to know the real church. Again, in Matthew 25, Jesus teaches us how a Christian should be. Jesus says, if you are my disciples, you have to give food to those who are hungry. Give drinks to those who are thirsty. Give a place to stay to those who are displaced. Give clothing to those who are naked. Visit and care for those in prison. This is how we can tell who the real follower of Christ are. Many claim to be a Christian, but they never perform any good deeds as Jesus teaches in Matthew 25. This is how we are able to tell the, the differences between real and ingenuine Christian. This is also we, where we can tell between a real and ingenuine church. So I have a question. Which do you prefer, real or artificial flowers? The real? Okay. For me, I actually like artificial flowers. I don't need to put fertilizer or water them. And yet, they stay beautiful forever. Right? Okay, I once met a huge fuss when I was dating Sarah in college. Sarah's not here, right? Oh, Sarah over there. Okay. I just want to say don't tell Sarah, but Sarah here, so... I was dating Sarah in college. I gave her a huge bouquet, huge bouquet of artificial flowers for her birthday. Why I said the huge fuss? Because you cannot do that in my seminary. We have boundaries between men and women in the dorm. But I was still a rebellious student even in seminary. Her friends made fun of me and saying that my love for her is fake. Just like those flowers. And I responded that it was quite opposite. Because my love for her lasts forever. Like those flowers. Right? I thought the real flowers would be die within a few days. But my flowers, Sarah can keep it and that is true. She keep it until we got married. You can ask Sarah. And she brings the flower to our home until Davia and Kenneth were born. That's artificial flowers. The only problem with artificial plants or flower is they cannot reproduce. They have no life or aroma unless you spray them with the perfume. So, this is the point. There is a difference between sheep and goat. As it says in Matthew 25, sheep can look exactly like goat sometimes, but they are different. If you're not familiar with those two animals, they seem exactly alike. Those who know about them would know the difference. They can tell just from the scent. Apparently, sheep smell differently than goat. Indonesian would be more familiar with goat because we have many of them over there. So, true Christian, don't forget, true Christian are different from ingenuine Christian. We all can claim all Christians seem the same. Nobody can tell the difference until they get a sense of us. The ingenuine ones don't have the kindness of God in their life. That can only be produced by the true Christian. Kindness produces good fragrance because they tend to care about others. And are willing to sacrifice for others. Other lesson from real flowers versus fake flowers. I know a little bit about the gardening because my father used to sell plants and flowers. Question again. If a rose plant has no roses in it, do you still call them rose plants? The answer, yes. Yes. That plan will still be called a rose plan because the flowers that will eventually come out are the fruits, not the roots. So even though we don't see the flowers, they are still called rose plants. Same thing. Our good deeds are the fruits of the salvation we receive. 
not the root of it. Good deeds do not make us a true Christian, but if we are a true Christian, we will produce good deeds as the result of our faith. I will close my sermon today with this two story. I have a lot of story today. There was a man whose car went into the ditch in remote village. So a farmer came to help with this horse named Buddy. Remember, Buddy. And he tied a rope to Buddy's buddy and tried to pull the car. So he said, pull Nelly, pull. But Buddy did not move at all. He said again two more times, pull Nelly, pull. But Buddy still wouldn't move. Finally, the farmer said softly, pull Buddy, pull. And the horse finally pulled the car out of the ditch. And the man said to the farmer, why did you call your horse with the wrong name three times? I thought his name is Buddy. And the farmer said, no, Buddy is blind. And if he, if he thinks he's pulling on his own, he wouldn't even try to pull. So that's why if I call others' name like Nelly, Buddy will think that he has Nelly to pull the car together. Second story, last story. During World War II, a church in Strasbourg was destroyed. After the bombing, some church members surveyed the church to see how bad the damage was. They were so happy to find that the statue of Jesus stood firmly with his hands stretched out. The statue was created centuries ago by a great artist, but the closer they got to the statue, statue they could see that Jesus' hands were cut off. So an artist offered to help fix the hands as a gift, that's mean for free, to the church. So the church leader met to discuss that offer and decided not to accept it. Why? Because they felt that the statue without hands spoke to them about the message of Jesus calling them to be the hands to help others. So what's so interesting about these two stories? As I said in the beginning of my sermon, God created us all and the church to be the extension of His hands in this world. But remember, to be the extension of His hands, we must work together. We cannot perform His great work in our own. When we work hand in hand to do the work of God, helping and being kind to others, we are supporting each other to do good deeds with love. All the ministry within the church must support each other, hand in hand, to perform God's mission. Whoever we are, whatever our department and ministry are, whether it is in nursery, food distribution, CK, global mission, preschool, local mission, we all have one mission. What is that? To reach those who are lost, through our ministries and those who do not yet know Jesus. And to show our good deeds by caring and helping those who are hungry and in need. So church, I want to close my sermon with this. If everything is missional, what is the implication and application for us here at New Life? Number one, as a personal, as a person, you don't need to be a part of the global team or to join the next Indonesian trip to be a missional or to serve. You can do everything here to help serve our church and all the ministry here keep thriving and growing. We have a ton of ministry that really need your help. Number two, as a church, we need to learn directly from Jesus. Don't focus on the building. I know this is important. Building, don't focus on the production or presentation or performance. But this is the time for me to change our perspective and direction to care and help for those who need our attention. 
We need to do something more. We need to do something to help the poor. They are poor, naked, and in prison. The poor are not only in Africa and Indonesia, but now they are here around us. They need your help too. So the last one, number three, as a leader, as a pastor, these verses challenge, challenge us in a questioning, especially me. What does serving mean for me as a leader, as a pastor? Is it doing all my job description when I get hired? Do it preaching my sermon with behind the podium like this, like today? So we are, I am the one that must do surfing first because they call us, they call me the servant of God. Surfing for me is not only sitting in my office for eight hours doing my sermon behind the podium, but it much more than that. Serving for me is to help people around me find Jesus. Help members in my congregation that really need my help. That is my responsibility to care and help them. Even though I have to sacrifice my time. My time with my own family. My time with my wife. In my seminary, I was taught the serving is not only this preaching behind the podium but it's also doing the job as cleaning the bathroom or doing the dishes for 300 students every day so don't forget first lesson about mission why everything missional because mission is surfing and then the second one mission is the good deed let us pray Thank you, Lord, for the word that I have shared. I pray through your Holy Spirit that the word of God will be passed on to all of us. I may be limited in conveying it, but you are not limited. My prayer is that as much as the word of God that has blessed me, I pray that it also strengthens all those who listen. But more importantly, that it gives us all new insights, new knowledge about the true meaning of missions. My prayer is that God's word today challenge and call us all to be a missionary in the sense of being Christian who serve, Christian who are kind and a blessing through our life's testimony to our family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, wherever we live. So if there are people here who God wants to call to be a missionary who serve outside America, may God speak to them specifically. Amen.